and welcome to another exciting edition of Explore Richland. I'm Mark Ingham. I have to say, when we scheduled this explore, I was a little nervous. Scheduling an outdoor shoot in the winter, surely there'd be some wind, maybe some rain, possibly some snow. But hey, here we are enjoying another beautiful Richland winter day. But the weather isn't the only beautiful thing we're highlighting today. We're here to talk about a partnership between a school teacher and two local nonprofits that is teaching students about the environment and how big of an impact they can have in their community. Well, to talk about this amazing experience, we are pleased to welcome Lindsay Gailey to the program. Lindsay is a fourth grade teacher at Wiley Elementary. Lindsay, thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, Mark. Now, the weather has shifted since we were out here earlier. It's a little bit colder than it was earlier, but we had a lot going on today. We had students in the shrub step. We had students with you down on the shores of the Columbia River. So I want to talk to you about what, what went down today. And can we start by explaining what was going on down by the, ri the river? So down by the river, well, I should back up. We come mm -hmm. out here four times a year, so once per season. And when the kids first get out um, of the bus, we just observe the conditions. So my big thing is for them to notice the changes in the shrub step over, over the course of a school year. Okay. And then I'll take half of the class down to the river and we analyze the water for uh, different water quality measures to see if it's healthy and mainly to see if it's a healthy ecosystem for our salmon because we raise salmon in our classroom as well. Oh, wow. So a lot of analysis of the water. We're looking at bugs, macroinvertebrates, and um, other different tests that the kids are doing down there. I haven't seen one of those down here before. That's yeah, really that exciting. Cool. Now talk about the work that was going on in the shrub stack. Right, so half the class is with me, half the class is up here with um, our Native Plant Society people, and we call them the Loraxes. Mm -hmm. um, so they're up here <laughs> saving, saving our shrub, and they're also educating my students beyond measure, which you got to see today. Mm -hmm. So today's task was to collect seed. We'll be growing sagebrush in the classroom, um, and then we'll come back out next fall and we'll plant those plants. That's great, and it was exciting to be here. It was really a joy to see, you know, the kids' faces, the right. smiles. Yeah. I mean, they were all engaged. Yeah. They were all very excited to be outside learning. What is the value of, of getting your students outdoors? You know, get them out of the classroom. And can you can you sense maybe the heightened readiness to learn when oh, they're outside? Oh, for sure. So, well, just for me, growing up in North Richland, this is a place that I used to come all the time, and I have a passion and a love for it. And luckily, in fourth grade, I get to teach about Washington State. So, mm. I try to really talk to them about the natural diversity in the shrub step ecosystem but if you just glance out here you might not see the value that mm -hmm. is actually out in the rich diversity so getting to come out here getting to explore it the kids get a hands-on um, learning experience four times a year so they get to not only see you know where we're going to be planting our plants but they get to see where we'll be releasing our salmon come springtime mm -hmm. so they have a real love um, of I think you know our community now of the shrub step and that's really what, what I want to impart upon them is that they can have a positive impact. Mm -hmm. Whatever they want to do, they can make a positive impact in starting small and then seeing what can become of that. And I think another amazing part of this program that you've created is it takes a full school year, but I, I believe they have to come back as fifth graders, right? right. To plant. So talk a little bit about, about yeah. that and how many people, how many of the kids actually get to come back and do that. Right. So this time last year was when we were collecting our seed. Okay. And so we're starting that process again. So we collected the seed. We made seed balls last year with mm -hmm. my last year's students. And then um, we grew our little sagebrush starts. And then um, mid-November, those kids who could come out on a Saturday with their parents mm came out and some Native Plant Society people and I, and we planted, um, I think, about 100 plants um, up north here. And now this is the second year you've added this into the, your <laughs> curriculum at school. I just have to imagine, it must have been pretty difficult to get this started. Talk about, you know, the challenges it takes to, I don't know, put on a field trip like this. Right, so <laughs> this is something I've wanted to do, gosh, for like 10 years. Um, mm. I just really think it's important to get kids outside to learn, especially out here. We have so much to learn from here in the Tri-Cities, especially with the Columbia River. So it's always been a dream of mine to get kids outside to learn. Um, unfortunately, with field trips, they cost money. Mm. And so it was about how am I going to get the kids where I need to get them? And I've been really lucky to partner with Sotheby's, um, with Redder and Company. They give back to the community really, really um, graciously. Oh, wow. And so they've sponsored these field trips for the last two years. So without them, this wouldn't be possible. Wow, that's great. And Lindsay, I'm sure all the hard work is certainly worth it. Well, I'd like to thank Lindsay Gailey for coming on the program and talking with us how she is using Leslie Groves North to educate her students. 
And as a father of a six and eight year old, I just personally want to thank you for putting your heart and soul into teaching and um, going the extra mile to inspire students and really ignite a fire and a passion for learning. So thank you. Thanks, Mark. You bet. Here's what the leaves look like when they're, when they're alive. Oh, they look like little mini trees. Yeah, uh, well, and they have a real nice smell to them, too. <laughs> And now it takes a lot of help to put on a program like this, and two groups that have passionately answered the call are the Columbia Basin Native Plant Society and the Lower Columbia Basin Audubon Society. Now joining me today is one of the all-star volunteers of both groups, Debbie Berkowitz. Debbie, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> well, Debbie, you know, why you've been supporting Mrs. Gailey's project since day one. Why was this something that your group jumped on board with? Well, both the Native Plant Society and the Audubon chapter really enjoy um, getting kids involved in nature mm -hmm. and um, letting them connect with nature, piquing their curiosity about their natural environment. Mm -hmm. And this is a great way to do it because um, this is a project that's been going on for 12 years, uh, this native plant restoration project in Leslie Groves. Um, and it's something that both groups are doing uh, with the support of the city. Mm -hmm. That was an amazing day. I was very happy to be a part of it. And I, was, I noticed you were in the native plants with the students. Maybe share with us what your role was today. Well, it was a combination of a couple of things. Um, partly we were um, teaching the kids about the native plants. Um, we were collecting sagebrush seed because the, the kids are going to um, be part of our volunteer effort. They're going to be, they collected the seed, they're going to be um, planting them in trays and uh, planters in their classroom, watching them germinate, watering them, taking care of them. You know, we're also um, trying to get them to understand what volunteers do. Oh. That was one of, of Lindsay's goals, was to let them understand what volunteers do for a community. And, you know, making them be part of that is, is part, of the, part of the goal. Mm -hmm. Wow, well done. And you know, I noticed a lot of smiling faces on the kids, and I noticed a lot of smiling faces on the volunteers, so I have to f feel like that those emotions were reciprocal. So how much joy does today's event bring to you personally? That's great, because mm -hmm. the kids just discover things. They're, they're just so, Lindsay gets them so well prepped for this field trip, and mm -hmm. they, um, they come out here, they're, they're geared to explore. And, and they do, um, and they find things. So they found deer scat, they found deer tracks. Mm -hmm. They know that deer use this area and live out here. Whoa! Yeah. That feels good. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> so that's the fun part, is just watching them discover things and getting excited about it. Wow, that's great. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we, earlier we talked about the two groups, the, 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 the Native Plant Society and the Lower the Columbia Basin, Basin Audubon, Audubon Society. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about what those two groups do in our community. Well, they both do a lot of public outreach. They, um, they have a lot of educational programs for mm -hmm. all ages. So both groups lead field trips. The Native Plant Society leads uh, wildflower trips in the spring. Audubon leads monthly uh, Bateman Island bird walks um, from September through June. Most of our activities are free for both groups. And we also have a website that um, you can find out more about us. And as a plug, we can always use volunteers. Yeah, you bet. I was going to ask you about that because I was going to say if, if your other events are anything like this event, I don't know why people wouldn't want to be involved with your group. Well, Debbie, thanks so much for coming on the program thanks, and talking Mark. to us. And today was just an amazing event. I'm, I was, I'm so happy to have been a part of it. It was really, really great to see the kids out here. And, yeah, it was great to and see the them. They were, they were really great. Uh -huh. you bet. Well, if you'd like more information on any story happening in the city of Richland, I strongly encourage you to visit, visit us at our webpage at the link below. And don't forget, we are where you are. Find the city of Richland on all the popular social media platforms. Find us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm Mark Ingham. Thanks for joining me on this edition of Explore Richland.